Well, hi everyone, it's Barbara Ann Foley again, and today I have a very exciting guest. We're going to talk uh, very briefly about a new program that's very exciting that our outreach department, uh, Kevin and I and Beth, have already heard about, but we want to let you know about it because you may know someone who's in need of it. With me today is Mark Denon from the Knights of Columbus, and he is going to tell you about this program. I'm going to ask a few questions that I'm hoping that you would ask, and he will let you know the answers and then how to get in touch with him. So, Mark, we have this program that's called At Our Gate, is that correct? That's correct. And what exactly is that? Well, the name At Our Gate comes from, comes from Luke's Gospel, which is the story of Lazarus. And Lazarus, as you know, lies at the gate of a rich man in need of help. And the rich man offers him no assistance. And then later on, both die. And the story is that Lazarus uh, is whisked away to heaven and the comfort of Abraham, and the rich man is tormented forever in hell. And I think the lesson to be learned from this parable is that we all have a responsibility to take care of those in need. And what the program involves, which was initiated by the Knights of Columbus, is to reach out to help the people in the community who are in physical or financial need to do light work around the house. And this could be simple chores such as changing light bulbs, it could be painting, it could be fixing a door, a door lock set, you know, uh, cleaning out the dryer vent. I mean, there's just a host of little things, taking trash, helping someone uh, go through the clothes from a, a lost spouse, you know. That's a very difficult thing to do, I know. Right, and then take them and donate them, for example, at the food pantry. So those are just some examples. Now, the program is open to everyone who has a need. The, there is no cost for the program, although there are, there are three requirements. Uh, first of all, the, the person must own the house. It must be insured. The work must not require a building permit. And it also, it must be within our scope, you know, within our abilities to complete the project in a reasonable amount of time. Well, I know that things from our perspective, we've had a number of people that have as you said, the, the light bulb issue or other issues that it isn't somebody necessarily that's even a low income person, but just physically is either disabled or can't get out to, you know, the, the street lamp that they have and can't reach the top of it anymore, or we don't want them on a ladder, that kind of thing. And having, years ago, it would be a son or a grandson, perhaps, if they all still lived local. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of our families don't have their loved ones close by. So this kind of program to have somebody that could do something simple like that for them is just, you know, immeasurable. But they don't have to be low income or income qualifying, correct? No, it's just the, just to have a, a physical or financial need. Although typically I will tell you that most of our clients uh, have been widows, as you would expect, uh, because women typically live longer than men. Mm. I'm fortunate we have, my mother-in-law lives next door and I think this is a, a typical example, you know, changing the light bulbs or taking something to the dump or helping her, you know, gather up some rugs to take out for cleaning. You know, there's just a variety of tasks that, that people uh, are physically unable to do. So if they had an interest or knew somebody who had an interest um, that fit those three categories, how would they get in touch with the Knights or with the At Our Gate program? Well, we have an application form for people to fill out, and uh, that'll be available f through Kevin here at the Community on Aging, or they can contact the Knights of Columbus. Uh, the phone number would be 508-430-5277. Uh, okay. And we'll be glad to follow up with them. And this is one of probably other and many programs that the Knights do. Is there a set group or is it who's available that day kind of thing? How do they know who might be coming to their home? Well, typically we would have two nights to go out. After someone has filled out an application, two nights will go out to the house and listen to the homeowner's requirements and try to evaluate if we're able to complete the project. So okay. they would see two people right off, right from the beginning. And later on, the people that would come out and complete the project, it would be a combination of nights and also we have volunteers from the Harwich Chatham community who have offered to support the program. So we have a, a wide variety of people to to help us in this endeavor. 
So conversely, if we had a viewer who said, wow, that sounds like a great program. I'd love to help them, and I've done some carpentry in my background or something like that, how would they get in touch with someone if they wanted to help you or to help volunteer? Well, we welcome all volunteers. And once again, they could call me, uh, the phone number, 508-430-5277. Okay. Um, so is there maybe one project or one completion that you could tell us about? Obviously, we don't need any names, but just an idea of something that was a really great project that you guys enjoy doing? Well, we recently did one for a widow where we painted her upstairs bedrooms. She was going to have some of her extended family move in with her, and I think we, we put six gallons of paint in two bedrooms. Wow. And, and she, was, she was extremely happy. It took us about 30 hours of work to complete. Uh, another example, we had a widow who was finally at the point where she wanted to donate her husband's clothes. So we went and we helped her accumulate all of them, tag them, inventory them, and then transport them down to the, to the food pantry. Uh, another example was a woman who had a outside pole light, which just need to be fixed. And it was relatively easy to do, but something she was disabled and unable to do herself. And it's, it's little things, but it makes a big difference. Absolutely makes a big difference. And even though it is not a cost to the program, the recipient can certainly donate to the program if they wanted to. That's, that's correct. We asked if they have the ability to pay for materials to do so. If they can't, then you know, we have a budget to, to cover that. We've also been fortunate in that we have had uh, the True Value Hardware Store has extended us a discount to use for materials Okay. to use for this project. And we've had other places uh, such as Paramount Carpet, which offered a discount for, for people, you know, where they needed carpet for the home. So we've had a lot of people really step forward to help us. So I think, I guess then the only kind of um, recipient or person that would not be eligible for the program would be somebody that doesn't meet those three requirements. Either projects too big, requires a permit of some kind, or they don't own their own home, they're in an apartment, or they're in a, um, a complex where they're not, they're renting. That's correct. Um, that kind of thing. Um, because often with these kinds of programs, we find that they are usually income-based. So although this isn't, the three requirements do need to be met. And then they'll have an assessment done once the Knights go in and after they've received the application. Yes. Is there anything else that you can think of the viewers might need to know? about the program? No, just that we'll get to them as, as quickly as possible. You know, we have, we have a list of projects we're working on right now, but uh, the response has been good, and we hope the program moves forward. We've, we've had the program being picked up by other parishes, oh, you know, wonderful. and so I think it's a good sign. I think it's the right demographics. I think people want to make a difference in other people's lives, and they're willing to help out. Well, one of the things we've noticed with our volunteerism is we do have some volunteers that, um, unlike some of our older crew, late 70s, early 80s, that come every week and volunteer, we do have some folks that want to volunteer a couple times a year or maybe for a project, and they find it difficult because they don't have the time to do an every week commitment. But something like this where, you know, Mark would call and say, I need you know, such and such gallons of paint on this house and I need you for two days, they can commit to that because they know it ahead of time and it's not something that's every single week. So I think that's also an advantageous to you guys. Um, the last question I have is, do you do any kind of fundraising or um, programs to try and help with the cost of this program? Well, the, the NICE have a variety of fundraising programs that they do handle, you know, raffles, uh, we do collections for the, uh, the disadvantaged, uh, and we're also having a tapas dinner this weekend, which we hope to raise money for the, uh, the program. But overall, uh, we accept donations. We're more than happy to. Uh, the, the more important thing is, I, I think today, it's easy, honestly, to, to throw money at a program, but I found people get much more satisfaction if they actually participate themselves. And I found the most busy person will find time if they can see they can make a meaningful difference in someone's life. And, and today I know people are, are working much longer hours than they ever have worked. It's a world economy. It requires people to work longer, be more productive, so you have people working. It's not uncommon to work 60 hours a week, and, mm -hmm. and the salary structure is not quite 
what everyone would like it to be. But yet I, I spoke to somebody the other day and he was 38, he had four children and he was, he was a fisherman and doing all kinds of other odd jobs. But he said, look, he said, if you need somebody to help, he said, I'd be willing to give you some time and come out, you know, and to make a difference. So it, it's always very heartwarming to hear that. Absolutely. That, uh, you know, it's, it's a good community. Uh, you know, I've only retired here a couple of years, but there's a tremendous amount of volunteers and a lot gets done. Absolutely, it does. And we see that every day here at, at the Council on Aging as well. Um, I want to thank you for coming and for letting us know about the program. Our Council on Aging in the Social Services Department with Kevin and Beth, um, and myself of course, have the forms that you need. And if you yourself need this program or you know someone who might, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. If you are someone who's homebound and can't get here yourself, we certainly can come to you. Also give us a call at the Council on Aging at the 430-7551, that's the outreach office. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you can take advantage of the program. Thanks again for being here, Mark. Thank you for the opportunity.